Hey everyone, this video will be on the common ion effect. Just to remind you, the dissolution of an ion compound is a reversible reaction that can come to a dynamic equilibrium. As an example, suppose we have a test tube containing a saturated solution of barium sulfate. Because the solution is saturated, some amount of precipitate has already formed, as you can see at the bottom of the test tube. Now, if some amount of sodium sulfate is added, the amount of precipitate is increased. It is important to recognize here that the additional precipitate is not sodium sulfate because sodium containing compounds are always very soluble, so they usually do not produce precipitates. So what is happening in the test tube when we add sodium sulfate? First of all, the concentration of sulfate ions increases. Now remember that dissolution of barium sulfate is a reversible reaction at equilibrium. So when the concentration of sulfate increases, the equilibrium state is disturbed. According to Le Chatelier's principle, this causes the equilibrium position to shift to the left side in order to reduce or oppose the change, and that is to reduce the concentration of sulfate ions. As a result, the concentration of barium ions also decreases, and the amount of barium sulfate precipitate increases. Essentially, the addition of sodium sulfate reduces the solubility of barium sulfate. Notice that both compounds, so sodium sulfate and barium sulfate, contain sulfate as a common ion, hence why this phenomenon is called the common ion effect. Let's have a closer look at how the ion concentrations have changed due to the common ion effect. As we explained earlier using Le Chatelier's principle, both sulfate and barium ion concentrations decrease as a result of the equilibrium position movement. This is better visualized by the graph on the right side. When sodium sulfate is added, the concentration of sulfate ions increases, but the barium concentration stays the same. However, over time, both ion concentrations decrease due to the movement of equilibrium. The concentrations change accordingly until a new dynamic equilibrium is re-established, and this is when the concentrations of both ions remain constant. The important detail not to miss here is that barium concentration in the new equilibrium state is now less than the initial concentration in the old equilibrium, whereas the sulfate concentration is now greater than what it was initially. Again, you can refer to the graph on the right side to correlate and compare the two concentrations. Finally, as the ion concentration change is shown, the amount of barium sulfate precipitate increases as we saw earlier. Now that we've understood how ion concentrations change in the common ion effect, what about the solubility product constant, Ksp? Remember that Ksp is the equilibrium constant for solution equilibria, so the actual value only changes with temperature. Therefore, the common ion effect does not change the Ksp of an ion compound, in this case barium sulfate, despite the fact that the ion concentrations change as a result of the common ion effect. If you calculate the Ksp using equilibrium concentrations of barium sulfate ions before the common ion effect and compare it to the Ksp calculated using the concentrations of the two ions at the new equilibrium after the common ion effect, they will be equal in number. So to summarize, Dissolving an ionic compound in a solution with a common ion will reduce its solubility. In this example, the test tube contains a saturated solution of lead chromates, where the precipitate has a distinct yellow appearance. When sodium chromate is added, a layer of lead chromate precipitate is quickly formed at the surface of the solution. Again, this is best explained using Le Chetis principle. Adding sodium chromate increases the concentration of chromate ions, which causes the equilibrium to shift to the left side in order to reduce the concentration of chromate. As a result, lead chromate precipitate increases and forms at the surface of the solution, and therefore the solubility of lead chromate is reduced. Let's take a look at a practice calculation question to do with the common ion effect. 2 grams of sodium chloride is added to 500 milliliters of saturated solution of silver chloride. Now here, keep in mind that sodium chloride is very soluble because it's a sodium-containing compound, whereas silver chloride is very insoluble. 
determine the concentrations of silver ions at equilibrium. So here we are specifically finding silver ion concentration. This is a common ion effect question because both compounds contain the common ion, chloride. The solubility of silver chloride is greatly reduced when some amount of sodium chloride is added as the equilibrium position in the dissolution of silver chloride is shifted to the left side. To calculate the concentration of silver ions, we first need to find out the concentration of chloride that is added by the sodium chloride. So we first find the moles of sodium chloride by dividing by the mass by the molar mass. Then we can divide the moles by the volume to calculate the molarity of chloride. Step number two is to write an equation and KSP expression to represent the dissolution of silver chloride as shown below. In the next step, we will need to make an assumption. Since the solubility product constant of silver chloride is very small, 1.77 times 10 to the minus 10, we can assume that the chloride concentration is entirely due to the sodium chloride solution. In other words, the amount of chloride coming from silver chloride is significantly smaller than from sodium chloride. So the chloride concentration is replaced by the molarity that was calculated in step number one. And finally, by rearranging the equation, we can find the amount of silver chloride in moles per liter. As we expected, the amount of silver ions that's still present is very, very small.